I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome, everyone. Tonight, we're going to start with a presentation by Jeff Demansky, who is working with our community choice administrator, Jewel Assets, and he is going to give us uh, an overview of the program. This starts the public outreach and education portion of the program, and he'll give us a timeline, explain how the program is going to work, and we will be having future meetings uh, at various org organizations, and we'll let you know about those meetings as well. They'll all be recorded, so you'll, you'll have plenty of opportunity to attend a meeting. Um, so, Jeff, are you ready to? I think I am. I just need to plug in so okay. I can be seen. <laughs> My computer can be seen. Excellent. Thank you so much. All right, well, thank you so much for having me here. I'm so excited that the town of Tuxedo is doing this program. I'm a born and bred Orange County guy, so this is really wonderful for me to see these communities and Tuxedo out in the front, too, with um, Highlands and Highland Falls in the forefront of doing this program. Um, I have a combination of slides tonight. I won't spend too much time talking about what the program is, but the blend of slides is to make sure that the town boards and folks that are watching know what this program is. And we won't go in depth, but there are slides that I'll show just in very brief that are uh, slides that we do include in the, the longer education presentations that we will do that we'll talk about to the public. But just to give a flavor of the way we present the information and the type of information we present. Um, what this program is, is um, often known by an acronym shown on the slide, a CCA program. But the program uh, that we're going to explore um, launching with the town of Tuxedo, um, and that is very much an exploration. You know, we are in this process of community awareness building about what the program is, and then in the spring, we'll have a decision point about whether this program makes sense. It is a program that is a uh, energy program that the town has entered into agreement with, a, with an administrator for the exploration to deliver benefit to the community members, all of the community members in, in Tuxedo. And it is focused on electricity, um, a decision around electricity, and it's structured, it was enabled by the state to structure overlapping benefits, um, a win-win-win scenario, of potential benefits, in a way that can deliver very cost competitive price for electricity supply. And I'll show you what that means by actually looking at our Orange and Rockland bill, um, in a way that promotes renewables at a very cost effective way, and that is very protective of the community members. It protects anyone from being in any restricted arrangement and protects people from a lot of the bad actors that have been very prevalent out in the energy marketplace for the last couple of decades, which many people know and experience. So the program, should it launch, I mean, during our exploration, we will call this the Town of Tuxedo Community Power Program, which is a CCA program. And just to explain who these people are, those two logos in the bottom, the town of Tuxedo entered into agreements for this exploration, a no cost commitment um, uh, arrangement with a company called Jewel Community Power. And they are, their role is the New York State approved administrator. So the state approved their, their plan to implement these programs. And so their responsibility is going to work with the municipality to obtain renewable electricity supply contracts and navigate all the complexities of the electricity marketplace. My organization, I'm the executive director of um, a program called Hudson Valley Energy, and I was chosen by Jewel to be the local program manager, which is an indication, an example of how Jewel looks at this state approved program, but goes way beyond the requirements that the state has. Jewel decided that they wanted to have a local entity within the community for the full exploration of the program, but way beyond. If the program does launch, my organization with Jewel stays here throughout as a resource to do community outreach and awareness building, but also to be a support on the other side of a helpline at doing office hours, answering emails, doing public meetings throughout the full life of the program, which is really important. 
because in essence, what's beautiful about this program is it's a handholding for the community around a topic that many people don't often think about, <laughs> don't want to think about. And when they start to think about it, it, you know, it's relatively simple. You pay your utility bill, but when you look into this movement from the grid that we have now, which a lot of people know is uh, inefficient in many ways, a lot of power loss between the power stations and the far distant customers, um, and, and uh, vulnerable to storm impacts, to the new grid that we are inevitably moving towards, which has a lot more power sources and storage sources and is much closer to, to the end users, the, the community members. It's a road that's going to be windy and bumpy, but this program is a way that the community has provided a resource and a really win-win scenario and a cost-effective resource to get us from here to there, you know, as a benefit for the community members. And so that's what this team is here to do. And now, this is more than the agenda that we'll talk about tonight, but this is the agenda that we would use for a public meeting. We would talk about the 101, what is this community choice aggregation program? And what are the benefits of CCA? Um, we do go back uh, to the acronym frequently. And then from a, a community member's perspective, we talk about how and if it will affect them. Because not everybody is automatically included in the program, though many community members are, if the program launch is automatically included. We look at it through the Orange and Rockland bill, and I will show those slides tonight, and then talk about next steps. And we do have a few slides that we use in all of our public meetings that are the frequently asked questions to make sure that some basic level of understanding is there for people who are in attendance to learn about the program. This is not something I show on the typical public meeting, but I will emphasize it in our public meetings. But this is to make sure that the town knows that you guys have already put information out there for the public to know that you are in this process of exploring the program. This is a snapshot I took today of the Town of Tuxedo website with the page for community choice aggregation, which has a nice succinct description of what the program is and has a link to a program page that Jewel has set up for the Town of Tuxedo Community Power page. This is a program that, as information is spread about the program, and if the program launches, it will draw a lot of attention. I want to rest assured that the idea of the structure of the program, and particularly the way that Jewel has done the program with my organization and support, is to make it a really turnkey arrangement for the town. The burden of being in, on the front lines to answer questions, to make people aware of what's going on, to respond to any concerns is what our team does. And these websites are part of that process of making the information as accessible as possible, which has links to information to dive deeper, information about public events that we'll hold, and other resources that, that are available to, to make the path as easy as possible. This is a description about what community choice aggregation is, and we try to describe it in these, short, these four short phrases. This is about a, basically a bulk energy purchase program that was enabled by New York State in 2016. In essence, it's like an analogy of, of Costco or BJ's Wholesale Club, where you're a member of a club and the power of numbers leads to a better price than you could get on your own for electricity supply the rate that you pay for electricity. It shifts, it's, people will be surprised because the essence of the way it works, the reason we can get that great price is because it becomes a default for the majority of the members of the community. Anyone for whom Orange and Rockland is not only the delivery company, but for, is by the state default established back in the 90s, if somebody does not make a, an alternate choice for supply, Orange and Rockland, by state default, is their supply decision maker as well. They do not make money on that supply decision. But for the last two decades, customers could choose an alternative supplier. That is the fundamental nature of what this program is based on. What the, what the state allowed in 2016 is the ability of towns to basically form these buying clubs, if you will, these, these Costco's, on behalf of their community members to bring the power of numbers to get a very competitive, often better rate than the utility would have obtained for the customers. And for us, it's a focus on a way to promote 100% renewable electricity sources as the source of that electricity in New York State. And so again, majority of customers will be opt out, not all are included, and we do explain in our program who's in, who's out. That's probably more detail than is 
appropriate for tonight, but rest assured, we'll have lots of opportunities for people to learn more about it. I won't go on for too much longer, but it is really useful to kind of walk through. And this is the older version of our Orange and Rockland bill. I do know that they updated it. Um, I still need to get the updated version to, to do this little navigation. But in this slide and looking at the utility bill, we show that there are, which many people don't realize, three sections of your utility bill. It's like three bills in one, all on this one page of Orange and Rockland. And there's some parts that don't change with the program, will never change, for better or for worse. There is a part that will change, which I'll show in green. And then there's a part that's often confused, and another opportunity that's often confused with what we're doing. And I can show it just very quickly through this, um, highlighting some sections of this O&R bill example. The section that doesn't change is the electricity delivery charges section. And that's contained in the red box there. All of the line items in there are the section by which Orange and Rockland makes money. That is the only section that Orange and Rockland is allowed to make money on since deregulation in the 1990s. That is, what, that is how they make money for all of the wires and, and substations and infrastructure that they own. And the customer service, everything they do, storm damage repair, that is in delivery services for people. And that does not change with our program. The section that we're talking about changes, a separate section, it's almost a separate bill, is the supply charges section. These are the line items by which people pay for how the electricity is generated, which includes inside there where it's generated. And it's a decision when O&R is making that decision that they exclusively make on their own without anybody's input. It is a rate, if you add up those line items, the cents in the middle column, that is the rate that people would pay on a monthly basis for electricity. This is a very old bill showing that the supply rate at this point was about 5.9 cents. It's more than twice that right now because of everything happening in the marketplace. This green section, this is a section that will change with the buying club program I'm talking about. You can see there's three line items. If you look inside the box, um, all different uh, cent charges multiplied by the same number of kilowatt hours. If and when a program launches, this section becomes simpler. The three line items are replaced by one single line item with one single rate that remains the rate for the duration of the program whether it's a 12-month program, an 18-month program, a 24-month program, which is determined in the future, but everyone will know the decision that is made at that time. So th what it looks like, um, what it's not, though, is this section on the right in the purple box. This, the charges that are included in this section um, would be charges for if somebody had a solar system on their home or if they were a subscriber to a virtual um, subscription program where they have a portion of a field, a, a portion of a solar field in Orange and Rockland territory, something called community solar. This is where those benefits exist on the bill, separate from the supply section of the bill. Just want to point this out because it's commonly confused, but it's something we will definitely dive into deeply in our community meetings to make people aware that community solar or solar on your home is a separate parallel mutually exclusive, but two things you can take advantage of from the program that we're talking about. So a, qu a quick and simple tour of the bill. The last thing I show in the bill, though, is, is the, what it looks like on, on the old version of the O&R bill when, the, when a program goes live, is that the, the delivery charges section is above the green line, but this is an example of how the supply charges section has just a simple line on this page, and then a separate page has the one single rate um, multiplied by the usage. And this is what it would look like on the O&R bill. The three line items replaced by one with the, the program rate shown and the supplier that we might select on this page. And so that's, from a customer's perspective, this is where it all lives. This is the, the changes they would see if they decide to stay in the program, um, all reflected here. So the, the tour of the bill is often very helpful for people. We do go into the benefits. There are, and I've kind of emphasized that this is about local selection. The town is involved in the selection of the bill. That it's it's a it's a of the rate. It's a leveling. It's a, a single fixed rate. It's something that accelerates renewable energy transition. And there's numerous elements of consumer protection baked into it. But all of those are are worthy of a deeper dive discussion. But we won't go into that now. We do talk about performance of other programs. This is a program that ran for two years just to the south of here in Rockland County. 
in essence, the story here is that the yellow line is the utility rates and the, the flat lines on the bottom, the purple lines were the program rates and the blue line is the running average. The story here very simply is that the programs can perform very well. They can be a cost benefit. The yellow line and it's running average of the blue line are higher than our program rates. So there is the potential for these programs to be a win-win in terms of promoting renewables and less expensive than what people would otherwise have paid. As detail we can go into. The last thing I'll leave off on is this is what our next steps are, what we're looking for for the town. I have an example of a flyer that we we will use for outreach and post in numerous places and advertisements. But where we are right now, shown on the right top bullet, is we are starting the awareness building phase for the town, uh, for all, for the community members. It's going to be a minimum of 60 days. Happily, it will be a longer period. There'll be lots of time for people to learn about this program. That outreach will include public Q&A meetings, and we have some, some come to us meetings that dates we're gonna still schedule. Um, we're going to be attending every other meeting where somebody will have us come. <laughs> if you will have us, we will come and speak to your group. For example, the Climate Smart Community Meeting that we just spoke about on December 5th, we'll be there to, to talk about the program. We'll seek the help of some partners to help spread the word about what's happening. We'll do advertising, social media. We'll talk about scheduling office hours so people can find us. And that will be just some of the examples of how we do public outreach. We will do this education and outreach. Jewel will keep an eye on the marketplace and the anticipated schedule shown in the second to last bullet is on the assumption that the market is looking good. Jewel will issue a request for proposals for electricity supply rate circa February of the new year in 2023. And if a good response comes back, a rate that's acceptable to the town, then the program would launch in spring of 2023. And the change would happen on people's utility bills for those who stay in the program. These are examples of our frequently asked questions. I won't run through them, but these are the three that we typically use in our program. So just explaining that it's, it does not replace the utility company, which is one of the most common things people confuse is that, that we're replacing O&R, we do not. And it does not impact the reliability. We, we answer the question, will it save me money? We said it can, but it's not guaranteed. And we can talk about that further. Um, we, and we really emphasize that th this is about choice. The name of the program in the wonky term is community choice aggregation. And what that means is that the communities aggregate together for that buying club to give their community members choice. And they don't take away any choices. It's just a new and potentially really wonderful choice option for the community members. And that's what we're doing. So I'll stop there. That was quite a bit, I know, still. But uh, I'm happy to answer questions. Uh, one thing uh, is uh, this program uh, is open to small businesses as well. Uh, what is defined as a small business? I mean, any, probably most of the businesses within Tuxedo? They would be. It's what's excluded from the program from the start. Any, pro any community member of any size, business, institution, anybody, if the program launches, can be part of the program. They can join if they want to. But a number of categories of both residential and businesses are not included. In the commercial sense, if you have a large amount of electricity use on a monthly basis, it's identified by the term a demand meter customer, where you basically pay extra to have a larger flow of electricity to your business, which is typically rewarded with a lower rate. It's kind of a volume rate that an individual customer would get. So because they do have an advantageous rate, even though they're paying this fixed demand charge, they're not automatically included because it's possible that their rate could be better than the program rate, so they leave it open for them to evaluate the time. Most businesses though, delis, the library most likely, other businesses along those lines are not demand meter customers and would automatically be included, but could opt out at any time that they wanted to. This is really all about choice. Can you tell me, how do you decide the rates? Like right now, uh, you know, the rates for regular fuels uh, is pretty high. <laughs> right. Um, how do you, how does your company or how does the, you know, the jewels or Hudson Valley, how do you decide on what the rates are? It's a, it's a navigation and an observation of the trends in the marketplace 
And Jewel, in particular, has uh, a long um, and, and strong experience in watching the market, looking at indicatives. Um, the communities that we talked about in Rockland, they had a two-year program. And they were looking to seamlessly, as other communities have done in other programs, they were looking to seamlessly continue that program when the two-year contract ended, they were looking, at, which was November, October 31st, they were looking to seamlessly start again. But because the market was so crazy, Jewel advised them that it was best not to do that. They did issue an RFP in October, and the rates did come back positive for an April 2023 start. So that's crazy detail in there, but it's the answer to the question is, it's an observation of the marketplace and determining based on historical data and the indicatives of what the market looks like going forward to determine what are the good opportunities for people. So what happened between November and April? There was, there will be, they did already because we're in November now, people just returned to having Orange and Rockland making their supply choice for them. So they went back to the, the original default, the state default, and they are subject to the variable rate during that period. And then in April, they'll they move. can choose to go back to a forecasted rate by Jewel. Yep, they're structured to automatically launch the program in April. A number of customers will automatically be included. They'll be informed of it. They can opt out if they so choose, but if not, they'll be at the fixed rate that was obtained by Jewel during the request for proposal process. Yes. So as you probably know, because you've been doing your homework, the town of Tuxedo contains the village of Tuxedo Park. The village of Tuxedo Park, I know, is working on a parallel track to set up a CCA. Um, last I checked, they aren't, as it, they aren't as far along in the process as the town is. But my, and I live in the, I live in the village. So do Tuxedo Park residents have to wait for the park government to complete this process, or are we just sort of brought along because the village is part of the town? Nope, it's a separate entity, so you, if the, you would not be included in the town if the town launched. But I can report, and I think it's looking very, very positive, that as of Wednesday night, I think you guys are going to be aligning up on the same timeline to launch a program. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, community solar, you will also look for opportunities for residents to, be, to take advantage of community solar projects within Orange County or the, Orange and Rockland region, right? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Um, I often use the analogy, and I, I even use it commonly in my, um, my municipal presentations of greater length. Uh, I show a picture of a Swiss Army knife and use that as an analogy for community choice aggregation. And in the design of community choice aggregation by the Public Service Commission, it's more than just a buying club for electricity. There are numerous tools to help us get from the grid of today to the grid of tomorrow with keeping this great you know, resource for community members along the way. The two main tools that are being utilized are one, the buying club for electricity supply, and the second one is community solar. So Juul has, has evolved, these programs do evolve as a state allows more use of the program. In the past, they have structured a program where they have vetted opportunities and partnered with municipalities to advertise a good opportunity for people to opt into community solar. But the way the program has been designed, and even more exciting is that community solar is moving towards a similar opt-out model um, where people would be given community solar subscriptions, which are absolutely cost-saving benefits, um, and then can choose to opt out if they want to. The idea of this, why that might seem an intrusive decision by, by a municipality, good, in my opinion, good structured policy helps reduce hurdles for people to make, to take advantage of good opportunities that are out there. And with the energy marketplace being as complex as it has been and full of bad actors, and within the complexity, the very common inability to know what the optimal structure is for any of these decisions. What's beautiful about the design of these programs is in partnership and led by an administrator and conversation with the municipality, you do optimize the decisions in a way that absolutely does not put any restrictions or any fine print funny business on your, on your community members. 
So it can be utilized for both a supply club for electricity and for community solar opportunities. I have one more question, then we could see if uh, anybody joining sure. online. Um, we will be f a part of a consortium, and how, how many other communities or municipalities are um, out there that we will be joining up with? There, it, it, the interest in this is continuing to grow, um, despite even the um, the volatility in the supply marketplace, there are just numerous communities that are moving forward with interest in doing this. It does not have to be communities next door to each other, as Tuxedo and Tuxedo Park are. Um, it is any community within New York State can be aggregated by the administrator, and the burden is on the administrator to assemble that aggregation. Um, so there are numerous communities, including a number in Orange County um, and other parts of um, of New York State that are available to join as part of the aggregation. And it's not a concern of tuxedos. And just that, I think the, the best thing to think about is that rest assured there is so many communities moving forward, there will be an aggregation ready to go when the town is ready to go. Oh, Rob. Yeah, I have a question. Yes. Is it total renewable sources or as fossil fuels in included in this? It's in every program we've done, there's been more than one choice available. So when a proposal is issued, the jewel asks the suppliers out there to say, give us a 100% renewable from New York State sources as an option, but give us other options as well. A 50-50 blend, um, something that's, that's what we call standard, which is typically what the utility obtains. So, and what most programs have done has had one of the options been the default. And pretty much every community we've worked with, the 100% renewables to default. But there is a second choice that is a blend of other types of fuel sourcing. And so, so customers, if a program launches, have the ability to one, just opt out and still have Orange and Rock and make the supply decision for them. Or they can stay in the program and make no decision and go with the default, whatever the town chooses. And if it's 100% renewable, they can stay with it. But they can also at any time say, hey, I want that second option. So they can choose something that's a, a, a broader mix of sources. And what would the opt-out time be? It's any time during the program. And how long does it take to opt-out? It takes a billing cycle, typically. But there is a 30-day um, opt-out period right after the program launches where people would never, you know, even if you're automatically in the automatic inclusion group, if you opt-out during that period, you're never included in the program. So it's immediate that you're not included. Okay. Thank you. Well, I have a question based yes. on Rob's question. So if you decide that you wanted to, if the town decided that it wanted to do option B, which is 75% renewable energy, 25% fossil fuel, as the program goes on, the Juul will not change that mix, but they will maintain the, the rate. Say it's exactly, 25 yes. cents. Yeah. Yes, when you make the decision to proceed, you pick a rate and the fuel mix and the sourcing, and it stays for the duration that you choose, whatever period. Including the mix. Basically, yeah, within the mix. Okay. If, it's, if that's what the choice is. And there's a number of factors, you know, affecting that, including there's potential, there's a program called the Clean Energy Communities Program, separate from this, and a Climate Smart Communities Program, where there is an added benefit for choosing 100% renewable from New York State sources, but... That's just part of the decision process that we will have a discussion about. Right. But my, I guess my general question was, once you start the program, the mix that you choose will maintain itself throughout the, the That period. contract period, yeah. yes. Okay. But you can, you can opt out of that mix at any time. And, and you can and switch change. between, yep, and you can opt out, you can opt back in. It's really, I use another analogy, it's like a public swimming pool that, you know, that you can choose which pool you swim in if there's two pools. Can an individual person say they don't want to be in the mix that the town is in, but they want to be in another mix? Uh, of the choices that are, yes. If there's more than one rate offered, mm -hmm. they can pick between any of the rates. 
Can I ask you one more question? Yes. If you already, I already have a supplier that's not, that's not who Orange and Rockland picked. It was, uh, I can't think of their name right now. Clearway. Right. That's one of them. Oh, yeah. That's not that one. They were really aggressive and it didn't go for them. But it was something like, it's like Solius or something like that. Sure. And uh, so uh, do I, do am I automatically changed if we go for this? Or do I have to say I want to opt in? Yes. Because I already have a separate So if you have an existing third party supply choice made, that is one of the groupings where you're not included automatically. That's one of the you know automatic opt outs from the program. You can though opt in at any time after you make sure that it makes sense to end your arrangement or wait till your arrangement ends. Right. And we can answer questions about yeah, that. I don't have any penalties or anything. I already checked it out, but I I, that, I thought I understood before. that when you first Explained it, and so that that's correct. that I have to do something if I want to exactly. go to the town. Okay. Exactly. So how is that communicated to to people who are in a third party arrangement? We do our best. They're not already included. Yeah, we do our best to spread the word through multiple channels so that people would know. Because when the program launches, I think to your point, it's it's people who are automatically included who receive a letter saying, "Hey, you're in the program," um, and if you don't want to be, this is how you get out of it. So somebody who's in this condition, if they have a third party, they don't receive a letter. But we try to get to them as best we can through the multiple methods of our awareness building efforts. Okay. Which is why we'll have many, as many public meetings as right. we can with right. silver dollars and homeowner associations right. and the library. Okay. Marissa, you want to see if anybody um, Joining us on Zoom has a question. You can uh, always use the raise hand feature. Or you want to just unmute everybody and see what happens? That sounds painful. <laughs> well, well, people can we'll raise mute them again. Yeah. People can raise their hand, or yeah. as we say, we're going to be having a bunch of meetings. So. Yeah. Okay. All right, well, thank you. Thank you so much for all this time. I yeah. very much appreciate it. I'm looking forward to this. Thank, so you. thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, next, um, Jeff will give you time to. Yes, yes. you don't have to stay, Jeff. <laughs> You're welcome to. We have snacks. But... So uh, we'll have public comments on agenda items. I'll quickly let you know what those are. Uh, first, we have a resolution to reappoint Fire Commissioner Edward Brennan. Uh, this speed zone. The speed zone. Oh, okay, thank you. The uh, second agenda item is a resolution uh, in support of establishing a school speed zone on Route 17 in front of uh, George Baker High School. And the third is the holiday contribution. Oh, yes, thank you. And the third is a resolution to approve the holiday concert and reception at St. Mary's. Those three are the agenda items, if anyone has a question or a comment. The raise hand feature, which is at the bottom of your screen, you can just click on that. Oh, Mary Gretzer has, has a comment. Right, so you asked to unmute, and then Mary has to do something. Yeah, no, it's me. Oh, there you are. Okay, we see, we hear you. That was my fault. Um, I, I, I noticed that you refer to the school as the George F. Baker High School, and I understand that that's easy, but I think you ought to also state that it's for George Grant Mason Elementary School because that encompasses the younger kids. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I think is in the resolution. Do we have a 
like a mileage point or something? Well, it's a study. You know, it has to be a study of the entire school district area. What that is what we're asking for. Okay. It's the vicinity, which means that whole block, which is the light and where the school district starts up to the light, which is full house. Did you hear that, Mary? I did. I, okay. I, can't, I can't believe how hard the state is making this. It's ridiculous. Now we're moving forward. Huh? Has this not been done? So, well, according to my research, as well as Howard's, we both did uh, research. I called them directly, and then Howard also followed up. Apparently, the town in the past had done their own signage and had designated a, a, a zone. And then the speed limit was reduced on Route 17, but it never was authorized as a school zone. So we have to pass a resolution by the town to ask for a study to be done, and then have it determined as a school zone. So that is what we're planning on doing tonight. Okay. I'll move forward with agenda item one, the resolution to reappoint Fire Commissioner Edward Benji Brennan. I'd like to make a motion the town, that the t town board hereby approves the appointment of Edward Benji Brennan to the Board of Fire Commissioners for the Tuxedo Fire District the term referenced begins on January 1, 2023, and has an expiration date of December 31, 2027. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Okay. Thank you, Jay. Any discussion or comment? Okay. I want to thank Mr. Brennan for serving. I'll take a, a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Mr. Brennan. I see you're on the Zoom call. We thank you very much. Might not be him. There's two. Oh, there's two. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, that's, that's true. Funny. So I guess that's why uh, the fire commissioner is identified as Benji. <laughs> <laughs> if it's the other Ed Brennan, we thank you also. Well, he also does a lot with the fire district. Oh, the other. Just, they just unmuted themselves. Oh, Ed? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, the reason for the Benji is I live on Benjamin Meadow, and I've been great <laughs> friends with Ed for many, many years. He gets my, my office calls and mid midnight calls, you know. <laughs> but uh, well, no, I appreciate, you. and our secretary included that just to make it clearer to the members like you say, there are two of us out there. <laughs> Thank you very much. And you both served with the fire district. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So we have a letter explaining from Howard. Alexander Main to Howard uh, about the school zone um, process. Howard should would you like to say something about this, this letter? No, no it's just, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. No, it was just a memo uh, to me uh, from one of my uh, colleagues uh, and uh, it's self-explanatory. It's, as Deidre had said, this is just um, part of the process to move this forward. And the resolution that you have before you is sufficient to accomplish that. Uh, Deidre has written, has reached out to the school to get something from them as well. And that, of course, will be very helpful in making this a reality. They actually emailed a letter um, over this evening and they said they're going to send a hard copy on the district letterhead okay. to follow. So we'll yeah. have that shortly. Okay, great. So we have that letter from the school district. Yeah. Would someone like to read the resolution? Oh, pick me. Okay, go for it. Resolution in support of establishing a school speed zone on State Route 17 in the vicinity of George F. Baker High School. And as has already been discussed, that includes the elementary school. It's the, whole, it's the whole campus. Yep. Whereas, pursuant to the Department of Transportation, DOT, Traffic Safety and Mobility Instruction, TSMI, 
the DOT may establish a school speed zone in the vicinity of a school upon conducting a speed study verifying the existence of certain conditions specified in the TSMI. And whereas the Tuxedo Town Board is in support of establishing a school speed zone on State Route 17 in the vicinity of the George F. Baker High School, and whereas the Tuxedo Union Free School District has similarly indicated its support to establish a school speed zone on State Route 17, etc. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Tuxedo Town Board supports the Department of Transportation establishing a school speed zone on State Route 17 in the vicinity of George F. Baker High School. I guess I, I, on, motion? Unless, unless you want your name on it, Deirdre. Since no, it's I don't your know. She could send. Okay, um, I'll make that motion since I read it. And then I have a second. I'll second. There you go. Seconded by Deirdre. Um, any further discussion? Well, I just want to thank you, Deirdre and Howard, for getting this. Absolutely. It takes eight months for them to get back to us, by the way. Six to eight months. That's, you know. The standard. That's how everybody knows. Okay, well. If you want apples, the best time to plant an apple tree is five years ago. Why they don't and want the it. second best time is now. <laughs> I called them. All right. Uh, any other discussion? No? All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Anyone opposed? Didn't think so. Okay. It passes unanimously. Sands. Ken. Um, okay, now item number three, uh, Deirdre, you were um, oh, initiating okay. the yes. concert and organizing yes. that, so you want to tell us what's yeah. as, going on? As, um, well, based on the success of the plein air, uh, we had a lot of people requesting that we do plein air again in the spring. And rather than repeat things, thought it was probably best to diversify a little. And um, as part of Tuxedo Art and Music, we thought we would uh, put together a, a uh, holiday concert, and St. Mary's has agreed to host it. We found a group of musicians who came together during COVID, all accomplished um, classic musicians who um, are chamber music specialists, and they would come to um, St. Mary's Saturday before Christmas and do a concert. Um, a chamber music concert, which would include um, Bach, Debussy, uh, I can't remember everybody else, but it's Shostakovich small. and Rossini. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it's a small program, only about an hour, and then it would be followed up by a small meet and greet reception. Um, and I am requesting a budget of a thousand dollars for this event. It is free to the public. The cost to the to the um, musicians is five hundred dollars, and I'm requesting another five hundred dollars, and probably don't even have to spend that much for a small reception. Um, but both um, St. Mary's and the town is uh, would like it to be free to residents, and we're also working to co-sponsor it as a um, program for the Slotsburg um, Food Pantry for a voluntary uh, donation. So the donations. A monetary donation, which um, is really what they need more than anything, and um, so we'll be asking for that also. So, the total um, cost to the town would be hopefully under a thousand dollars, but I am requesting a thousand dollars for the program. And we do have um, the concert, the the musicians lined up, and we also have St. Mary's lined up. So, thank you. And it will be four o'clock. Four o'clock on Saturday, um, December seventeenth, at four o'clock. It's about an hour, an hour fifteen minute program, just before dinner. Perfect, so you don't have to fall asleep. <laughs> Great. Would you like to make a motion? Oh, any questions? I thought we got. You know, anybody have a question? Oh, sounds great. Okay. Yes, it would be wonderful. All right. So I'd like to make a motion. Where is it? It's at the bottom. Uh, that the town of Tuxedo hereby approves co-hosting a holiday concert with a reception to follow at St. Mary's in Tuxedo on December 17th at 4 p.m. for a cost of up to $1,000. Do I have a second? A second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Hope I see you all there. Yeah, it's going to be great. 
It's a beautiful place, uh, and it'll be all decorated. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. It's yeah, going to yeah. be fabulous. They're very excited about it, to be honest. And, and I'll forget, so please send out some kind of reminder. Oh, yeah, okay. we will. We'll be working with Claire to help uh, promote this. So Excellent. Get her some experience promoting concerts now. <laughs> Okay, we have uh, monthly reports. The uh, building department was sent to us earlier. It's the, there's nothing that requires any action, just he wants us to note about some of the complaints. There's no, there's no, no specific action. actions required at the moment. We have the justice court report. And Marissa has, is here, so we'll let you give your report. Oh, okay. Let's do my update. You don't want my financial. Do you? Oh, do you want to? Do you want to talk about your report, or I can if you'd like me to? <laughs> Highlights. Highlights. Parking permits are on the rise. They have been for this past year. We're keeping track of how many spaces are utilized. Um, we don't have too many open on the upper lot, which is right by the train station. Those are only available to tuxedo residents. So we're now requiring um, proof of residency to ensure that they're tuxedo residents and not just have a mailing address in tuxedo. <laughs> so. Excellent. Yes, something we've learned along the way. Other than that, pretty straightforward. Um, a lull in marriage licenses. It's not prime time for people getting married. Summer was busy, but it slowed down a little bit. Okay, thank you. And Rob. Well, there's a couple things. Good evening. Um, are you done, Rosa? Yeah. Oh, we have to turn your. Yeah, home. yeah. there we go. Tonight, or t uh, excuse me, tomorrow night, we are expecting our first winter storm of the season. Um, up to two inches of snow and possibly a tenth of an inch of ice. So we will be out. Uh, today we started getting all the plows and sanders on the trucks. Tomorrow we'll finish getting them on the trucks. And we'll be out uh, tomorrow night taking care of that. Um, we are still picking up leaves. Just because we're gonna have a little snow tomorrow doesn't mean we're not gonna start picking up leaves. If we go past your house, we don't get your leaves or you put leaves out behind us, whatever the case is, we will be back to get them up until December 15th. So please don't panic if you still have leaves in front of your house and you saw the truck go by. We will be, we will be there. Um, but, and right now we're picking up that, we're getting ready for the uh, snow season and winter, and that's basically what's happening at the highway garage at the moment. Oh, speaking of trucks, wait a minute. We have three trucks down right now going into this storm. One's at Arkell having a clutch put in it. One is having a new chain put in it for the, uh, the body, uh, chain for the body that makes the salt go out. Um, yeah, having that put in it, and the truck is at Ford, having the four-wheel drive fixed. So we're down three trucks. Hopefully, this small storm, we can take care of it, what we have, and uh, that's where we're at with that. So that's it. That's what we got. Thank you. Mulch, compost. <laughs> <laughs> There's some other updates. Okay, sure. Bit, sorry. Um, these are for the town board first. So I'm in receipt of this. It's to the town board. It's a referral for the Watchtower project. Um, so we will see where this needs to go, whether this needs to go to the planning board as well, or if it has to go to the town board for review. Jay did find that there's a zip drive in there, so maybe I could just... But I'm not sure everything's on it. It looks like this is an update of the plan and tech memo, all the stuff that we've been going through for Tuxedo Farms. This is a, a parallel. Mm -hmm. It is the same sort of the, thing. The for the audio, the, 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 uh, entertainment, the, for the yeah. media, for audio the audio visual center? Yes, for their, okay. for their audio visual center. Um, 
Ramapo is in fact the lead agency on this mm -hmm. project, but you know, there are seven acres inside of Tuxedo and we're an adjacent municipality. So we have the, we have a say, or we're allowed to make, we, we have standing to make comments. And I know that the planning board has been our arm, has been the town's arm at looking at this stuff. So my guess is this is going to the planning board more than us in particular. Okay. Um, but we'll figure it out and we'll get it to the right people. Yeah. Have you spoken to Howard about we, that? This came in oh. moments ago, so we haven't spoken to anybody yet. Oh, okay. We will. Well, the portion that's in Tuxedo, as uh, you know, Rob knows, uh, you actually were the approval person for... No. The, the, how did that work? The, the planning board. The planning board. Planning board. Okay. Right. Yeah. Because it ended on a uh, county road, I, I had no authority. Ah. The planning board in the town had the authority to, to do that. The entrance is absolutely beautiful. Have you, yeah, oh, you yeah. have to drive no. by. The, yeah. the quality of the work is... Well, that's if they don't start there good. And what, you know, if they, if they don't start there well, what's the rest of it going to look? Right. So, mm -hmm. they have to. And then that grass is so green, I think it's asterisk. Well, sod. But uh, one thing I did forget, um, I don't know when the next town board meeting is. According to my thing, it's the 28th. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. Claire is having a turkey trot on Thanksgiving. Don't know if everybody knows that. Don't know if it's on the website yet. It is on the um, website. It is? Yes. Okay. Warwick Brook Road, bring out, bring out your stuff and head, head for a run, I guess. Yeah. So uh, just throwing that out there. Yeah, Marissa has the details for the time. That, and, and, and the, and the tree lighting. Be. The tree lighting, I believe, is the second. I would have to look at the calendar. Second or the third, uh, December. So it's early, it's going to be early this year. So it's on the second. The second, yes. So that's going to be real close to the next meeting. So um, just to prepare everybody. That's a Friday, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the, the uh, turkey trot, I, we, I was part of it last year. Unfortunately, I'm going to be in California this year for Thanksgiving, so I won't be able to be part of it. It was really super fun. Mm -hmm. It was really great. It was uh, well attended. There was a lot of little kids and families and, mm -hmm. you know, runners of every age. It was, it was really great. Thank you. Marissa? I put together a Zoom room manual for anyone that's just dying to know how to use this. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, I don't want the information just to sit with me, but um, I did train Deborah. So her last planning board meeting, although it was quick, she was able to, to use it, went smoothly. I think her next zoning board meeting, she'll be able to run that on Zoom as well. Um, I did teach Michelle how to operate Zoom from the climate remote. store. Yes. And that, that worked, worked well, well too. Good. So. Very Thank good. Um, so that's good. But I have nice screenshots in here, pictures, everything. So right. very yeah. easy. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Is it, it, do you have that electronically? Oh, I will email it to everyone. Hey. And yeah. Yes, <laughs> please send <laughs> it to me. Everyone. Yes, yes, no problem. <laughs> the one thing that's different from WebEx is that you, each meeting has to be scheduled by you with the so, distinct meeting ID number and password. Yes, Zoom, Zoom feels that it's safer, a safer option, just for safety reasons. So mm -hmm. it generates a new meeting code each time and a new passcode. Oh. Rather than just we that had it, sense. we had WebEx, the link was just the link. And anytime you clicked on it, it could open up to the WebEx meeting. Um, this is just a little safety measure. When the when the term for disrupting a video meeting has your company name in it, you find ways to, <laughs> to fix that problem. Yeah. yeah. So I'm like recurring meetings, like Climate Smart Meeting, would that have one meeting ID each month, or do, do they, I need to get a new one? They don't recommend doing that, though. So okay. We would, yeah. Um, it's, you need access to an Outlook calendar, basically, and you can just schedule the meetings through there. So if you have a list of meetings for the year for Climate oh, Smart, okay. just let me know, and then okay. I can get them scheduled, and then those meeting IDs and passcodes are already generated 
And then I think what's helpful is to put them in the town calendar on the date, because I feel like a lot of people go there for meeting information. They see the meeting and then it's just listed in there. So I can get that posted on the website. Okay, perfect, yeah. thank you. You're welcome. Did you um, have more reports? I do, I'm sorry. I'm no. <laughs> so with Thanksgiving coming up, the pickup schedule for town residents for garbage and recycling and observance of Thanksgiving on Thursday, it will be pushed back to Friday. So Friday, Monday will be normal pickup and then it's pushed back to Friday, it will be garbage and recycling. And the school, Tuxedo School, high school, are hosting their 12th annual toy drive. They dropped off the collection box. We have one in town hall. There's many throughout the town, different businesses um, that you could find them and they decorate it really nice. It's cute wrapping paper on there. And the collection period is now until December 16th and they're asking for new unwrapped toys, games, and even gift cards. And that's it. What time is the turkey trot? It starts the, there's a kitty race that starts at eight and then the 5K starts at 8.30. So the kitty race is just, I think, one lap around the page area around Quarry Fields. Um, so they do that for the younger kids. And then the 5K is actually on Warwick Brook Road, and that's at 8.30. Okay. At Quarry Field. Okay. At Quarry Field, yes. Excellent. Carrie, thank you for joining us. Would, do you have Thanks anything? <laughs> uh, would, do you have anything you'd like to report? I do not. I think you have all the, my, my uh, well, vouchers to, to approve. It's been a fun uh, couple weeks. <laughs> Seamless. <laughs> okay, I'll just start with my one quick update. Uh, this week I'll be meeting with uh, New York Power Authority to look at our town owned buildings uh, for the purpose of getting an energy audit so we can move ahead with replacing the highest priority will be the HVAC system in town hall. Uh, so I'm meeting with them, also waiting for a proposal from Daylight Savings, and which is a company in Goshen that does energy audits, and another company that's called L&S, and they're up in the Albany region. So I hope to have all of those proposals for the town um, by the 28th. Although I think we kind of approved that we were going to go ahead so we are, i mean especially if it's nicer and it's for free well that would yeah that'd be easy so i think that we we like the concept i think if we're gonna have to pay somebody we should talk about what we're coming through yeah paying. i think we talked about an estimate of uh five thousand at the most but yeah i don't remember um, I'd like to look at it we'll see i'll let you know what happens on thursday if anybody wants to join me I, but I can't make it. Yeah, morning. three o'clock here, town hall. Okay, okay. Um, Maria. Yeah, so I just wanted to remind everyone that we are in the process of conducting a senior survey. 30% of folks that live in Tuxedo are seniors now, and it's been a while since we have had any kind of survey. Uh, also, if you're a caregiver, um, there's, there's this part of the survey too. It is anonymous, uh, and if you, and we've been trying to, you know, go to our neighbors and throughout, you know, throughout the town to, um, you know, go to folks and, and give them uh, a copy of the survey. It, uh, so, but if you are interested and we haven't gotten to you, you can email me or you can, uh, let Sue sure know, and I, you know, definitely if you let me know, um, uh, ma.tuxedogov.org, I will get, I will get them to you, so. Um, Maria, what is the, what are we surveying? I mean, we're surveying so we're seniors, surveying but we're, what's the information? all kinds of information about seniors, like, you know, what are the, the kinds of things that you need, um, you know, um, I don't know. Um, transportation. transportation needs and technological right. uh, instructions. Right. 
Um, are you savvy with the websites? Are you getting the information that you need? What kind of services can the Office of the Aging bring to tuxedo um, residents that will help them and make their life easier? And, and that's what we're doing it to the information so that the this Department of the Aging is a state agency? Yes. Yeah. So we're so we're using this information to request more services from the state right. for exactly. tuxedo right. residents. Exactly. Got it. Right. So this these results, uh, you know, Sushar as well as the silver dollars and there she's a social scientist, so she will analyze the results and we have been in touch with uh, uh, the uh, New York State uh, Department of the Aged, and they wanted more information uh, okay. about us. We are a small town, so they've been reluctant to, you know, do much. But now that we have a, a senior population that's growing, uh, you know, we want we want more information to go to to have that information anyway. Good. So, okay. So the. Um, is there also a, a county eight, uh, office? I mean, who would we be most in touch with? Or well, we we have we have we contacted Orange County, and they you know we're working with them as well, but they haven't been very receptive uh, in the coming. She's, we, you know she keeps postponing and whatever. So I think I I just think that they want us to have some some data to go to them, uh, both the county and the state. So um, so we're trying to get that information to them. So uh, like I said, it, it's anonymous. So, you know, some folks were like, well, I don't want my sign my name to anything. You're not signing anything. <laughs> Honestly, we don't know. It's we don't know who, gathering. Yeah, we don't know who's answering, you know, the questions. We just want folks that are 60 and over to do it. Um, so that, you know, you're, Preferences can be counted and analyzed and, you know, put forth. Okay. Great. Jay. Hi. Um, I'm just going to use my, uh, my bully pulpit here for a minute. Uh, as people may have noticed, it's standard time now, which means it's dark at night, which means that it's dark at evening rush hour coming home. Mm. Yeah. So for all the people who are still walking on the street, make it easy to see you so we don't have to clean you off the hood. Um, wear something reflective or at least light colored. And it's the Boy Scout in me, I know, but the proper way to walk down the street if there's no sidewalk is on the left side of the road facing traffic. And this isn't just me making this up. It's actually in the traffic code. So, the left side of the street is the right side to walk on, because that way at least you have a chance of seeing the car coming at you. So, I'll be quiet now. Can I add to that? Yeah, please. So, it's also deer mating season. So, deer are jumping out in front of traffic, particularly around dusk hour time. Yes. So, you've got to really be cautious about deer yeah. right now. Right. More than ever. And you can't get them to wear a reflector. No. <laughs> so, or take birth control. <laughs> you can, but that's a different, that's a different study. <laughs> well, with the full moon, I'll add that the coyote <laughs> have been crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Howling yeah. at the moon every night as soon as it gets dark. Ah. Yep. By, by the, by in, in Orange Turnpike. There's They're some up there. coyotes up there, yeah. yeah I hear them every night. The other thing too, if you have dogs, they are reflective hoods and collars. Um, I happen to have a, a black dog, so and, and keep them close to you because they are they, they you can't see them. Right. Mm -hmm. They're black, so or uh, whatever, either color, but I think I have the reflector things that you can put on there. It really helps. Okay. Deirdre. Okay, uh, I have two, or actually three little items. One is just an update on the Hamlet revitalization program. Um, the Greenway uh, grant application was submitted, and so we're expecting a, a response on that by the end of the year. Um, so that is in. Um, the Burgess study, the initial plans have come back, so we're reviewing that. 
so that we can um, review that with everyone. We now have the school zone for the corridor um, as a resolution today. And then we've also reached out to the New York State Department of Transportation to talk to them about reviewing the corridor um, in conjunction with all these other programs on how the, the flow of traffic going from the beginning of Tuxedo all the way through uh, Southfield is, can be uh, improved, enhanced, or what, what we need to do, um, or we may not need to do anything, but to continue the, um, the improvements that were made in Slotesburg and make sure that we're not, we don't become a bottleneck either as, as the traffic flows through. So just to recap, we have four programs that we're working on about the revitalization of the Hamlet. One is the streetscape and the analysis of adding pedestrian walkways and how we can help for commercial and retail business. The second is the Greenway um, grant, which would do an analysis on the economic uh, needs for the community, what would be viable uh, businesses that would be in the corridor, not just in the Hamlet, but the whole corridor, where they would be actually survive. So what, what could we, what could the town support? And one of the things they're looking at is what is what they call leakage. So where people would normally be able to get in their, in their town, where are people going to get it? And we all know people either go to, to ShopRite in Mon and Monroe, or they're going to ShopRite in, um, where is it, Ramsey. Not to say that, that ShopRite is, we need a ShopRite, but that, that's an example of leakage. Um, so that is the economic um, arm of this, then the school zone, and then the uh, New, York um, New York Department of Tra uh, Transportation. We're meeting with them in December. So combined, we're hoping to get a good view um, and analysis of what really can happen in, the, in Tuxedo. And then we're going to have um, focus groups with the community and um, small businesses within the community to talk about what we found and to get some feedback from them so that we could put a plan in place. And so that's, that's basically a recap of the revitalization. And then second is uh, my particular topic is Eagle Lake. Rob and I met with um, Joshua Laird, who's in charge of the um, Pipsy um, lakes and the, basically the whole thing. So he came with his crew and this is the second time we met and we talked about the fact that we believe Eagle Lake um, has some viable um, interest to the community. And basically the DEC has decommissioned the dam. So it's really not up to the uh, Joshua Laird's group to decide on how to reestablish that or if, even if they can. So they suggested that we, along with them, and they agreed to work with us, get in touch with the DEC and talk about what, what kind of solutions we can have so that we don't have to drain the entire lake, that there it still has, it could still possibly have some recreational value to the community and uh, not pose a threat. So we're continuing to work on that. Actually, Rob is working on that and I'm helping him. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so we'll keep you posted on that. And then finally, thank you for approving the, um, the concert. It'll be fun. And uh, that's it. Okay, thank you. Along with the um, tuxedo revitalization, Howard, we have a meeting set up, I believe, to review applications, uh, revised applications for the Hamlet Revitalization Fund. I believe it's on November 28th. I believe that's a public meeting, right? Yeah. Yes, it would be. Is, is that the LDC meeting? Yeah, the Tuxedo LDC. Yeah. The, yeah. the, the yeah. revitalization one, not the sewer one. Right, yeah, that's, that's a public meeting. Okay. I think it is at, I could tell you. <clears throat> two o'clock. I, I don't have that on my calendar, actually. So thanks for bringing that up. Okay. The 28th. 
All right. I'd like to make a motion to accept the minutes of the regular bi monthly town board meeting held on October 24th, 2022. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Thanks, Maria. Any discussions? We all reviewed them and mm -hmm. sent Marissa our response that they were perfect. <laughs> okay. Um, they were long last time. <laughs> yes. Wow. A lot of information in the minutes. Because long you put all the resolution in. Yeah. Those were the two. Remember, you read through them. It took a while. Yes. Yep. <laughs> okay. okay. I'll take a uh, vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Like to make a motion to that the following vouchers, having been audited by the town board, are hereby approved for payment. Claim numbers 201-292-0750 through 201-292-0829. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Thanks, Jay. Any comments? Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. I just have a question. Usually, oh. have to. We've got to sign the book. Yes. Carrie, you've got to. Okay. Very okay. good. Get them before we get out of here. You'll never get it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Carrie. All right. We'll open it up for public comments. You can you raise your hand? There's only two of them. If you just I'm ask them. Mary or Ed, do you have a question or a comment? Public comment? No. Nope. Okay, thank you. All right. I'm fine okay. also. I'm fine also. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you okay, Ed. thank you, Ed. We were going to set a date for workshops. Ah. I thought we were going to set a date for workshops on the 22nd, but go ahead. Let's set a date for workshops. Oh, I, I, I just, thought I just brought it up. I okay. Mean, I didn't know whether or not. I saw an email from Ken asking if we could do it on the at the meeting on the 12th of December. Am I making that up? I don't know. <laughs> if we're going to have if it's going to be uh, a discussion that's part of a regular board meeting, that's easy because we're all going to be here anyway. Right. Uh, that would be my initial recommendation, but. I think he was thinking with the holidays, it was probably going to be tough to find yeah, another yeah, yeah, yeah. date that everybody would be available. Okay. So we'll do that. We'll be part of the agenda, Marissa, is um, a reorganization. I mean, even if we wanted to, and I don't know how people's schedules are, but even if we wanted to you know, start that discussion earlier before yeah. the, before the I formal think meeting. That's a good idea. Okay. Um, Just maybe even an hour earlier would be fine with me. I could make that work. I'm How about you, Mark? On the 22nd? No, no, no. this would no. be, uh, I'm sorry, December 12th. Oh, December 12th. Okay, yeah. yeah. Is that okay with you? Yeah. And that'll give us some time to, I mean, it would be a workshop beforehand. People can tune in if they want, but it'll right. give us some extra time to, to do this stuff. Okay, Marissa, when, when Maybe it'll be an incredibly the light meeting and we won't have anything else to talk about. So. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll start the workshop at 6. And then the regular town board meeting at seven. Howard, do you have anything for us you'd like to mention? No, I don't. All okay. quiet. <laughs> okay. That's good. That's nice for a change. Okay, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn the meeting. I'm sorry, can I? Oh, I'm sorry. I I just, thought... just. I'm sorry. Oh, other business. Other okay, business. sorry. But you have nothing to report now, Howard. I can't remember. Do we have any outstanding? legal matters that, that I mean as we get into the end of the year maybe in one of the meetings coming up we should have a short session to go over anything that's outstanding or we have nothing outstanding uh, no I think a, a session to go over the outstanding matters and review the status of some things that have been percolating along makes well, sense we actually have a list well, these are just action items on legal uh, matters? No, no, no action items, but just a report. What about the tax tertiary? Do we have to have, is that ready for us or? Not ready yet. Okay. But, what about but I mean, exactly those sorts of things. So yeah, maybe, like the town village issue, the, you know, the con consolidation. Everything, everything that, yeah. you know, as we're getting to the end of the year. So 
the meeting of the maybe the meeting of the 28th, which is our next. Well, I can circulate the list I have of just dangling items that you know it just yeah. I, I just action. keep a little list. So you know? I guess yeah. I, so Howard I can. Be, I won't be able to do it on the 28th though, because I'll be in California. Um, oh, la di da. Okay, the meeting after that, which I guess is the 12th. The 12th. Well, well I'll just circulate my list. Yeah, you guys can look at and just add what you said. Yep, yeah, absolutely. You know? Okay, also, cool. Also yeah, copy, copy me on that, Deidre. Yeah, sure, sure. Yep. We need to make appointments for some of those right. boards. Right? Yep, we do. Yeah, we got a couple of things that, are, that want yeah. summary, but we'll get there. Right, so sure. maybe on the 12th, we, well, we can talk about scheduling um, meetings with people interested in the appointed boards. Mm -hmm. yep, yes. that would be good. We have two so far and two people suppose we hear here uh, may be interested. Right. So, okay, good, sorry, that was. No, that was... no, thank you for reminding me. Any other business? Okay, now. I jumped the gun, but I'd like to make a motion to adjourn the meeting at 8.19. Do I have a second? I'll second that. <laughs> thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you, everyone, for thank coming. Thank you for joining us. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you, Howard. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Yes, happy Thanksgiving. And my brand new nephew. Oh.